Good day, everyone. So today we are having our class in EDMGT602, which is the Educational Planning Organization and Management. So welcome po sa, sa ating class. Good morning, mga classmates. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Good morning, Dr. Anacleta. Good morning po. So I am here to report uh, one topic in our subject. So let me open my uh, presentation. So we are now in Pacific Intercontinental College, taking up EDMGT602. I am here to report all about approaches in educational planning. I will be uh, giving you the definition and examples on Philippine setting on these approaches. So uh, yours truly is Cecilia A. Caran from Halang Banibanay Integrated School in Amadeo, Cavite. So taking up uh, PhD in Educational Management. According to UNESCO and IIEP, there are two major categories of planning which is considered in the study or in determining approaches. These were traditional planning and strategic planning. Traditional plans were determined by using manpower approach, which focuses on labor market, social demand approach, which focuses on community, society, and linkages, and the cost-benefit approach that focuses on profit money, and outcome. On the other hand, the strategic planning uses these traditional uh, planning approaches plus strategic planning uses stages and activities such as diagnosis, policy formation, planning targets and operations, and monitoring. By the way, uh, my dear classmates and mom, strategic planning will be discussed by uh, other reporters. So I will not further elaborate more details of strategic planning. Comparing the two, the traditional planning is input-oriented, technocratic, neutral, linear planning, with rigid implementation, routine-based compliance monitoring, and with emphasis on the plan document. While strategic planning is result-oriented, participatory, mobilization instrument, iterative planning, flexible implementation, change-oriented, performance monitoring, and has an emphasis on plan implementation. So let's focus on the traditional approaches or the traditional planning approaches. But before I give the meaning, let's uh, have this activity. So given the picture, can you give me a word which can be associated with this picture? Yes, training. Uh -huh. Any other? Teachers. Yes. What else? Faculty. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have heard one. Manpower. You are correct, manpower, because the first approach we have in traditional planning is what we call the manpower approach, or on the other book, they call it as manpower requirement approach. So, pareho lang naman po sila. The knowledge and skills of the labor force are the key players. In education system, we produce qualified people for a particular work. 
The team assigned to planning should equalize the proportion to the resources not focusing on manpower alone. So, let's go now with Philippine SETI. In the Department of Education, we have our open ranking. Yan yung hiring natin. We take into consideration job matching. Kasi nowadays, meron na mga job mismatch, especially in the industry. And also, uh, part of the planning is when you hire applicants, you will check the RQA. So, si applicant ba na i-hire is from the registered qualified applicants list or the RQA. For C, the student-teacher ratio. So, what if ganito ng kadami? Are the rooms um, suffice the number or the population of the students? Next, second picture, perfect. What work can you associate with this picture? Yes, may teacher nga dyan. Naku, yung iba, si Gov Pogi agad ang nakita, di ba? Yes, Gov Pogi is there. Uh, the politicians, the local government units. Yes, the society. And when we talk of society, we will be considering social demand approach. Uh, it considers the current demand for education which will be based on some demographic profile of the members of the society. The demographic profiles are the uh, age distribution, the population, the social goals, and consumer preference in education. And talking about the Philippine setting, uh, Pag sinabi natin social demand approach, yung usong-uso today, which is the LCP for school heads. So, yung mga school heads po natin dyan na classmate, makaka-relate po kayo dito. So, pinagawa po kayo ng learning continuity plan, school-based. Then, also, we have the learner's concentration map. Ito yung, ito yung map na kung saan nilalagay natin sa Google Maps kung saan nandun yung mga learners natin. Saan ba ang marami? Another social demand approach na ginamit natin on planning kasi nga Department of Education faces one of the problems uh, amidst this pandemic. Hindi tayo makakapag face-to-face -face and totally inalis na yung F2F. -F. Ngayon, um, Ipinakilala yung different uh, learning modalities, pero bago, okay, bago nagkaroon ng learning modality, dumaan muna ito sa plan. And uh, one of the plan approach is the social demand approach where learning modality is uh, surveyed sa ating mga estudyante. The third picture, perfect. Ano pong nakikita nyo? ATM, mm -hmm. correct? Telebanking, yeah, you have the point. Salary, opo. Salary, syempre, pag tayo nag-withdraw, ano ho? Cost, yes, I heard it right. So, the third educational planning approach is cost-benefit approach. So, these are the educational investments according to the needs of the education subsectors with the best rate of return. On the other book, these uh, cost benefits are called rate of return approach or education output ratio method approach. It clearly forecasts the end part of education, which is employment. If this planning approach is not properly studied, there might be an increase of unemployment and job mismatch in the industry which could affect the economic growth of the country. What are the considerations na isinasaalang-alang ni Department of Education in Philippine setting? 
performance indicators or the completion rate for the past three years. Ito yung tinatawag nating SRC, yung School Report Card, or the ESIP, yung ESIP. Then another, we have the aggregate method approach. This relates to educational needs other than that of the output and manpower, which deals with proportion. Aggregate method approach is based on the norms and the patterns emerging from the country situation at different stages of development. No. Okay, that's it po. So let's uh, summarize what are the, the three major approaches in educational planning. So we have the manpower approach or the man requirement approach, comprehensive approach, and the HRD or human resources development approach. Pare-pareho po sila and they all, they all focuses on manpower. Then we have the social demand approach. So society na po ang take into consideration on, on while planning. The intra-educational extrapolation approach, the demographic projection approach, or the social justice approach. They are all approaches in strategic planning that, co that belongs to social demand approach. And the last approach, we have the cost-benefit um included here is the educational included here is the education output ratio the rate of return approach and the aggregate approach okay those uh, of approaches oversees the cost uh players of the company or the school so these are my references Okay, parting words po. Remember the two benefits of failure. First, if you do fail, you learn what doesn't work. And second, the failure gives you the opportunity to try a new approach. So, approach pa rin po. This is from Roger Vaughn Och. Okay. So, that would be all po. This is Cecilia Angkaya Karaan from Halang Banay Banay National High School for approaches in educational planning. Thank you and good afternoon.